Okay, that's my uh, 45 seconds to give the quick intro. Uh, the intro is going to be in Tadasana, the first standing pose. So just stand arms alongside you, however you want. I've got a poster here today. This practice is partly inspired by Darren Rhodes, who uh, created this poster, and he was in Victoria a few years ago and actually taught the whole poster in one day. It was a five-hour practice. And uh, it's not a sequence, it's a syllabus. So that's the focus today. So just standing tall, lift through the crown of your head. The other inspiration is I uh, entitled it The Last Stand. So it's inspired by X-Men 3, the worst of all the X-Men movies. Uh, reach your arms up into the air. Hold on to your left wrist with your right hand and then arc over to the right. This is one of the few poses where we're gonna uh, split it up just in halves. It's a long hold for 45 seconds, especially if you don't have the external heat that you'd have at a moksha or moto or whatever the name is now. On an inhale, come all the way back up and then hold the other wrist and lean over to the left. Keep your chin lifted, look forward, really just getting the body prepped and warm. Okay, and then on an inhale, come all the way up, and on an exhale, swan dive, bow forward, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. This may be the only pose that we return to at the end of practice. So uh, just feel where you are right now, and then where it's gonna be later on. Uh, if you do wanna go further, go further. If you need to tuck in your shirt like I do, tuck in your shirt. Uh, further could be holding your ankles, tucking your chin in, or you could do less. Just put your hands onto a block, bend your knees quite a bit. Lots of options. And that, that was pun intended with because your shins are right there, op shins. It's a really bad joke. Okay, on an inhale, lift for a halfway lift position. You can keep the fingers on the floor and just stay there. You could have your hands to a block or place your hands to the tops of your shins. Uh, bend your knees forward and move the tops of your thighs back so you get an arch in your low back. And then lift your chin, so your chin is away from your chest. Push the top of your head forward, keep the arch in your low back and push your legs straighter. Then on an inhale, slowly rise up, place your hands to your hips, and then turn wide on your mat, clasp your hands behind your back, Prasarda Padatanasana, wide-legged standing forward fold, bow over your legs. If you don't want to do the hands clasp, you can always just touch your hands down or hold on to your big toes. If you want to go further, go further. No one's stopping you from doing nothing for no one. That might have been a quadruple negative at which point all of the negatives canceled each other out so that it became positive. Breathe deeply. The challenge of the standing practice is that it seems easy, but then you'll realize it's not. So it's accessible, but quite demanding and challenging. On an inhale, slowly rise up and then uh, turn forward and then touch your hands down. So have your left foot back, the, you have your right foot just switch so that we're on the same side. And this first one is just a lunge position, pausing on fingertips and holding. Lift your back heel so it's over the toes. You can rise onto your fingertips just so that your side waist is away from your thigh and your legs are engaged and strong. No need to push it too hard at the beginning it will get more challenging. Welcome to all those who are joining. 45 minute standing series, 45 second hold, 45, 45. And then push off, step forward and step back. If you wanna turn this into a flow practice, you're always welcome to just go through a flow between each side. Then you just have 30 second holds and it becomes a bit more of a flow practice. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the advantage of this practice, though, is you don't have to weight bear in the hands. So if you've got a shoulder injury or a wrist injury, this is a perfect practice to do. Keep your back heel lifted. Settle into your front leg. Lift your chin. Get active and strong with your legs. 
and breathe deeply. Next version isn't always my most common one that I teach. It's just a combination of it. So now step your foot forward, step your foot back, combination of uh, this pose and down dog. Bring your hands forward and out to the left. I actually like the variation where I drop the back heel down. So it's the lunge position of your front leg, but then the down dog position of your upper body and arms, and then just push your hands forward and move your hips back. So using the action of your hands pressing down firm into the ground to send the hips way, way, way back. Okay, last breath in and then switch to the second side. You can always do a quick jump switch if you've got the energy and then down dog lunge other side. Just be careful if you've got this random poster in your way. You might have to adjust the space around you. So some do this pose with the back heel lifted, some with the heel down more like a warrior one foot, others like a warrior two foot. It's really up to you. There's lots of different variations and options. But just playing around with getting low in your hips and pushing your hands forward. Okay, next one, step forward, step back. So left foot's back. Goes where you could use a block if you like, but uh, just right hand to your knee or hip. Twist to the right and then arm up into the air. And then if you want an added side body stretch, turn your palm forward, bring your bicep over your ear, actively extend and reach out. And because it's uh, a focus on the last stand by X-Men 3, that's a weird movie if you've ever seen it. You think of yourself like Wolverine with the claws reaching and extending out. I think by the time this quarantine's over, I'm going to be as hairy as Wolverine. Okay, and then switch legs. Right foot back. Again, you could use a block or not use a block. Find the twist. Take your time. Use your inhale to get long and then exhale to tone and twist your belly. Twist, tilt your ears back, arm up into the air, or to reach and extend long. You could always bring the hand flat, almost turning it into a little bit more of a side plank position. It's never a bad idea to give the legs a little bit of a break if you can, because it'll get toasty quick. Okay, switch legs forward, back, float your arms up. And then this is a high lunge position, but we're going right into a twist. So hands together and then twist to the right. I like to make a fist with the lower hand and wrap the other hand over top. Uh, we've shortened it down into fisted hand on top hold, which is a terrible name, fisted hand on top hold. Uh, settle down low. Lift your back thigh up, wrap the right butt under, the right butt, not like the correct butt, but right versus left. And it's probably easiest to uh, switch by just stepping forward and then stepping back. Arms up, get your length, and then tilt forward, right hand, lower hand, fisted, wrap hand over top hold position and twist to the left. Keep your back thigh high, settle in lower into your front leg, lift your chin. It's starting to get a little bit warm now. I actually practice with some lights on around me if you can notice the shadow. So it, it actually feels like a hot yoga class in here when I practice. Okay, then step forward and step back, triangle pose. So turn your left foot out, left hand to your hip, straighten your front leg. Again, you're welcome to use a block. And then right arm, or pardon me, left arm up in the air, the correct arm 
is what I meant. And then just pause and hold. Push the feet in opposition to each other so you get more anchored and grounded. And then wrap the right butt under. Lengthen through your spine. Lift your chin so you can breathe fully. And no fans, just switch sides forward, back, triangle, other side. Turn your right foot out, spin to the right, and reach your right arm up into the air. I like the idea of offering these 8 p.m. classes. Does everyone else like that? And give me a thumbs up, then I know I'm watching you. Everyone's watching you. The downside with the 8 p.m. or even going later is I don't know if my neighbors appreciate or give the thumbs up on that one. I feel if it's before 9 p.m. that's their problem. Okay, step forward, step back. This time revolve triangle. So you can bring your back heel down or keep it lifted. Keep your left hand down, straighten your right leg. Twist to the right and reach your right arm up into the air. And this is actually matching a little bit of this poster of Darren Rhodes has. It's entitled Penchant for Practice. You're welcome to look that one up. I do not get any royalties from that. I just state it because I've had this poster for a long time. It's great inspiration. Um, so going from triangle to revolve triangle. It's a syllabus and not necessarily a sequence. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, then step forward and step back and then straighten your front leg, twist the left, and then you can go left arm up into the air or you could reach it forward. I often like just hand to the hip. So true blue version of the pose is back heel down. That may be a limitation for some, especially when it's one of the earlier poses in the practice. So this isn't necessarily um, a peak sequence strategy where we're building up to a challenging pose. We're using this pose just to warm up the body for other challenging poses later. Okay, and then switch legs. Thanks, Mookie. And then turn your left foot to the left side angle position. You're welcome to use a block go to any of the height settings or keep the hand to the floor outside your foot and then reach your left arm long so it's in line with your ear. And then I'm a bit of a rule breaker. I lift the outer edge of my back foot. That's the version that I like to do. And I think of my foot being on a wedge that I could push down evenly as opposed to focusing on the most important part of the pose being the outer edge of the foot. Oh, look at all these thumbs up. I should ask more questions like that. Reach and stretch long and then hand down and just switch legs. It might be a bit easier through down dog and then side angle pose second side. So if you want to make it less intense, just take longer in your transitions. Again, you could still be flowing, getting ready for the second side. The challenge sometimes with flow classes, both the uh, teaching or taking from my perspective is you can end up just losing a lot of time in the transitions and not actually being in the pose, holding, building the strength and really where the growth and transformation happens. Stretch and reach long, look under your armpit, be careful not to breathe too heavily through your nose there and then switch legs, right foot forward, left foot back, left foot out and then clasp your hands behind your back, rise up slightly, and bow forward towards the inside of your right leg. Finding strength and stability in your legs, but a sense of freedom, of lightness, and fluidity in your upper body. You can even move a little bit forward and back like you're riding on a surfboard. That's how I surf. It usually lasts for about a split second. 
and then hand down and just switch legs. Down dog might be a bit easier switch or pseudo down dog. And then just other side switch. So you have your other thumb on top, the non-dominant clasp. I've only really been surfing once. My friend uh, Tom, if you're watching Tom, uh, is in Perth and he's like, oh yeah, mate, here's a good wave for you. Oh yeah, just catch this one. It was way too challenging for me. It was good for him with like 30 years of surfing experience. But uh, for me, which was like 30 seconds of surfing experience, it was not appropriate at all. And uh, surfing can be quite dangerous for those who've been hit in the head with their board. Be careful. Okay, step forward, step back, pyramid pose. Same as revolved triangle, you can lift your back heel, straighten your front leg, bow over your leg. You can go for a shorter stance with your heel down. You could even go into a reverse prayer position if you'd like. I actually sometimes like that, that long stance position and even bending the standing leg a little bit to lift the sit bones up and then push the front leg straighter. Use your inhale again to get long and exhale to move in. How quick can you transition? Switch legs, second side. The one thing I give credit to uh, those who can surf is paddling. Whew. <laughs> that is hard to do. That is quite the workout, the balance. So after I fell trying to get up on the board, I then just was like, I'm, I'm happy with this paddling part. Paddling, challenging, I'm good there. Settle in, bow in further to your front leg. And maybe a pseudo break here, right foot forward, left leg back, knee down. I like to point the back toes and then reach the arms up into the air, Anjaneyasana. So it's still standing-ish. Um, option to hook your thumbs, bend your elbows, pull your hands away from each other, get your arms strong, lift through your chest, move your shoulders back, push your arms straighter, sink down lower into your front leg. But it's getting a good stretch for the front of the back thigh. Just tricky to understand. The front of the back thigh. Here. Okay, and then switch legs. Might be easier to go hands down, step back, step forward, knee down, point your toes, rise up, make shadow puppets the other way and then pull the hands away. Push your arms straight. If you're like me and your biceps are quite big, uh, you run the risk of crushing your own head with your biceps, so just be careful. Modify accordingly. Sink down lower into your front leg, stretching through the front thigh. And then moving into a bit of a warrior series. Uh, hands down, step forward, step back. So left foot back, heel down, and then rise up for warrior one. If your shoulders are tighter, then just go wide with your hands. You're always welcome to bring your hands together, interlace fingers, index fingers point up, or hands totally flat. Settle down low into your front leg, working towards getting your front thigh parallel to the floor and parallel to the long edge of the mat. It's the Warriors series because we're going to do Warrior 1 and Warrior 3 with one other pose in the middle. Can you guess which one? Yeah, Warrior 2. Warrior 2. Okay, and then hands down, step forward, step back, heel down, and then rise up. Ideally trying to do the transitions in about five seconds. The advantage of just going side to side like this is we're making it even timing so that you don't do more on the first side and less on the second side. And then also just moving away from 
getting the body out of balance and doing anything complicated in a flow series. Instead, just sticking to one pose and then the other side. New pose and then the other side. So after warrior one comes warrior two. So just step forward and then step your left foot back. Turn your foot out this time. Bend deeply into your front knee and stretch your arms out. So right foot, right arm forward, left arm back, lift your chin. I actually like to look sometimes just in the same direction as the heart. So to the side wall, you don't always have to look over the front fingers, sink down low, working towards front thigh, parallel to the floor and parallel to the long edge of your mat. Unless you're practicing without a mat or you're practicing near someone named mat, then it's a lot more confusing. It gets quite challenging. Okay, just to help transition, just switch by turning your foot in and your other foot out and warrior two, just a little easier to transition that way. Settle down in lower. It's one of the most difficult things as a yoga teacher is when someone named Matt comes to class and then trying to teach to them without feeling like you're picking on them all the time, like put your hands on the mat, touch the mat. Now it's like, hey, don't, don't touch the mat, like hands off, two meters distance. Settle in low, pull your feet towards each other, curl your fingers so that you can tone your arms a little easier. Next pose, certainly one of the more challenging for 45 seconds, which is warrior three. Push off of the left foot, lift it, facing forward again, arms forward and leg back. If you want to modify, just arms alongside you and then bend both knees a little bit more airplane style. Both spring style is globe hands, propeller pose. Nothing wrong with that. Straight arms, straight legs is very intense for 45 seconds. Up there in uh, most intense that you're gonna get. Last 10 seconds, breathe deep. Boy, we're about halfway through the practice at this point. Haven't even done anything on the hands yet. Uh, foot down and switch sides. Lift your right leg back, tilt forward. Again, you can have arms alongside you, especially if you held it the whole time. Nothing wrong with giving the arms a bit of a break. We call that a Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod. For any of you out there who actually understand that option, of course, go back into it if you're feeling good again. Reach the arms long. And that's the Warrior series. That was pretty fantastic. Next one is a little bit of a play on Uttanasana, standing forward fold. So just returning to where we began, feet down, bow over your legs, but then move your hands over to the left and then place your right hand to the outside of your left shin and begin to twist underneath your left armpit. So it's called the Parsva Uttanasana. So just a little bit of a, a side Uttanasana. And then nothing fancy, just going over to the other side. Right hand over, left hand to the outside of your right shin and twist underneath your right armpit. Again, there are times when breathing through your mouth is a positive. Okay, going right into the next pose. So as you rise up, hold on to your left knee and rise to stand. Just a basic balancing position here. Stand tall, lift your chin, bend your elbows out to the sides. And then you can make your left leg stronger instead of just having it as dead weight. Flex your toes and then pull your knee towards your hip. Push your knee back into your hands. Use that to stand tall. You're always welcome to make balancing poses a little more demanding by bending your standing leg. And then no rest, just foot down and lift your other leg. So my right leg, spread your toes, bend your left knee, 
pull your knee back in towards your hip, lift up tall, breathe in deeply. Moving into primarily the one-legged balancing position stage of practice and uh, pretty well the rest of the practice. Maybe a couple of poses at the end with both feet on the ground and uh, one after the next one, but it's going to be primarily one-legged balances. So I'm sorry, it's not making any friends. Uh, right foot down, lift your left leg. This time hold the outside of your foot or big toe and then lift your shin so it's parallel to the floor. Counterbalance with your right hand. Option if you want to go straighter with the leg. So I can go straight with my leg there but it feels awful for my back. So I've got the goal of getting the leg straight, but compromising the rest of the body. Uh, so instead, I think it's more important to stand tall, lift the shin parallel to the floor, and then push the leg straighter from there. That feels great, but my leg isn't straight, but working, I think, more appropriately. Okay, and then switch legs. Left foot down, hold the right foot or big toe, pull back, push forward, counterbalance with the left arm, lift your chin, stand tall, stand proud. Oh, I gotta be careful, that sounds like a, an advertisement for the US Marines. The poses are more than meets the eye. That's an advertisement for transformers. Okay, lower your foot and then sit down into chair pose. You can float your arms up. You can do bar stool, which is just staying a bit higher. Or if you wanna get lower into your legs without the effect on your back, you can always bring the arms alongside you. So the Transformers is a bit of a joke, but not a joke. So more than meets the eye is a, a good way of looking at the yoga practice, that the poses are just gateways to change who we are, that we shape shift to state shift, which is an expression that this uh, fellow Darren in the poster often uses. We change our physical form to change our mental, emotional, and spiritual form. Reach the arms up again. This time, lift your left foot for one-legged chair. You can also bring your fingers down, also known as Daniel Sun position, karate kid, sitting up for the crane. It's really just one-legged chair, not the most reliable chair to sit in but definitely a reliable chair to gain strength. Hold strong. The one-legged balances have begun in a row, maybe seven or eight in a row now. So dig deep, stay in there, and switch legs. Sound effects help everything in life. Shout out to my favorite sound effector, Krista Shillington. Have a look uh, for her classes online. She's amazing. She's always doing sound effects in practice, whether she's teaching or taking. Settle lower into your front leg. Push the arms up. You can flex and spread the toes of your right foot so that the leg is strong and engaged. And the next pose is gonna seem easy after the one-legged chair. So just tree pose, lift your left foot, place it to your upper inner thigh, and then hands together. You can always go inner shin, inner ankle, or if you have the flexibility to do half lotus, you can do that. There's a pose where you go both legs in lotus and then balance standing. Um, I demo it, but I'm not gonna demo it. Um, the only way I'd be able to do it is to actually take a photo of myself and then just like split it in the middle and then do that like mirroring effect where you're like one side mirrors the other. 
but then it might cut I might look like I have no feet so that might not actually work okay switch legs right foot to your inner ankle inner shin inner thigh and then if you want to grow your branches up out you want to add a little bit of a, a electrical dance you can go into that Whew. it's the time of year in victoria where the trees are blossoming which actually probably lasts from mid-february to probably mid to late may so that's a long period of time going into globe hands a little bit more bowspring style here and then eagle position left leg up and over right leg left arm under right arm uh, if you want to modify this you can always make a kickstand with the left foot you could always hold your shoulders hold your elbows genie arms position or just self-embrace remember hugs and then I actually like to cup the back of the head and just lean back, turn it into a bit of a back bend. If you're in the eagle arms position, you're welcome to squeeze it in for the last 10 seconds or so, rounding and tucking your chin in. And believing you can fly, believe you can touch the sky, just switch sides. So rise up, unwrap the arms, unwrap the legs, and then go other side. Right arm under left, right leg over left. And again, self-embrace, hold elbows, cup the back of the head, option to bring your foot down. Tradition's great, but it's also really nice to just have options for how you feel on any given day and not feel like you are supposed to be a certain way. So if you shape shift to eventually just like hurt your body, that's not the point the point is to get to a place where you can grow and shift your state of mind okay and then uh, right foot down left leg back behind you hold your foot right arm forward dancer's pose kick your foot back tilt forward uh, the Bikram style of dancer's pose is holding the big toe side of the foot and then twisting the chest towards the left, kicking your foot up. Um, the Iyengar style is to hold the outside of the foot, kick back and then try to hold the foot behind you. So just same, same, but different. And then bowspring style is actually to even bow in, touch, and then rise back up, which is a fun version. Okay, switch to the other side right hand holds foot behind you you can also just do the gym stretch where you pull your heel in towards your butt and tuck your tailbone under but kick your foot back tilt forward again pick and choose if you hold big toe side of the foot the hip stays square your chest turns to the right if you hold little toe side of the foot both chest and hip stay square to the front and then you're reaching to hold the foot behind you i just need my almost there just about there and that's where I like the rebound version bow down touch squeak and then come up and then foot down left leg back but same arm so right hand holds left foot so it's opposite same arm as you just did holding left foot with right hand kick your foot back and tilt forward and then for this one, option to do several rebounds. If you've got a lot of energy in you, which is just a tap. Come up and tap. And come up and tap. And come up. Only 10 more minutes to go. Way to go. Whew. Okay, and then rise up and switch. Hold your right foot with your left hand. Kick your foot back and tilt forward. And then again, option to rebound. So after I did this workshop that Darren taught in Victoria, all of the poses on the poster in one day, in five hours, I didn't do them all, 
But then I decided I'd teach one with all standing poses in the poster and for one minute holds. And it took at least two hours to go through them, but it's the only time where I just about hurled in class. If you don't know what hurl means, maybe not look it up. Okay, then right foot down, left leg lifts. Touch your hands down, standing splits position. You could give yourself a bit of a break by using a block. You could test your balance another way by holding your ankle with both hands, the lower ankle. If you just need a break and you love handstand, then go for it. I'm not stopping you. Take a stand. It's called handstand, so it's kind of like stand. Might be your last stand. I think Wolverine would be really good at handstands because he just like put his claws into the ground and then hold himself up. Okay, nothing fancy, just switch legs, foot down, foot lifts, balancing on your left foot. Again, option to hold on to your ankle, first with your left hand, then maybe as well with your right hand. Breathing, softening, lifting the leg high, allow the wiggles to happen. That's how you build strength. It's also what the Australian government did, I believe, as well, to allow the wiggles to happen. Okay, and then right foot down. You may like a block for this half moon pose, left leg into the air, stack left hip over right hip, twist to the left, and then left arm up into the air. Again, you could go lower and lower with your block. You could go hand to the floor, or even hand in front of the chest. So up to you. Uh, not going further, just because we will go further, a little further. That's too many times. You can't use further three times in a sentence, but I did. I was going too far, further than I should. Okay, pretty simple. You don't have to do a fancy flow to switch sides. Just lower your left foot, lower your left hand, lift your right leg, reach your right arm up into the air. Five seconds into the second side of half moon. If you do two half moons in a row, that's a full moon. Just do what you can to keep your pants on. Although when you do practice from home, if you're in a safe space and you know no one's watching you on your phone or your computer, then do what you wanna do. Okay, and then lower your foot and lift the left leg up. This time the extra fun is to bend your left knee. If you need a bit more help, bring the knee into your chest, hold your foot like dancer's pose, and then kick your foot back for drinking sugar cane in the moonlight pose, Ardha Chandra Chapasana. And I just like having the block. I can go hand to the floor, but it just actually feels a little bit more liberating more opening to use the block. You don't have to bind or stress as much. Where well, the one thing about this quarantine is they're gonna kind of save people so much money on pants. I've got one option in the morning, every morning, sweatpants, that's it. Uh, switch legs, right leg lifts, bend your knee, grab hold of your foot, kick your foot back, lift your chin, and twist to the right. Keeping the shoulders back, puff up your chest. You can even move your right knee further back to embrace more stretch. But be careful about sacrificing balance, which is one of the joys of this pose. Find the stretch, go to the max edge, but still maintain the strength to balance Okay, and then right foot down, keep your left hand down, lift your left leg, right hand to your hip. You can even go right butt, 
and then just twist to the right. This one is called revolved half moon pose. We kept the hand down just so that we switched the legs because the legs are what are doing the work. This is a 45 minute leg sequence. As I said, two hours was my max. That one was tough. Last 10 seconds. Coming down to the home stretch. Okay, and then lower your foot and switch sides. Right leg lifts, right hand down. So it's just opposite foot and hand or on the floor. Twist to the left. And then you could go arm up into the air. It can be just nice to have the hand at the low back, emphasizing the low back in, or hand to the butt, lifting the butt up, lift your chin, breathe fully, lift the leg higher, push your leg straighter, breathe deep. Even the standing leg could push a little straighter as well. Okay, and then lower your right foot. Same thing, but different. Left leg back. This time grab hold of your left foot with your right hand. Revolved drinking sugar cane in the moonlight pose. Kick your foot back. Twist to the right. Move your right shoulder back. Kick your foot into your hand. Lift your chin. And then maximize your twist first. Then push your standing leg straighter. Ground down through the base of your toes, like you're gripping onto the mat with your toes. This is like you could grip onto your mat with the fingers or I am with the block right now. Okay, and then a quick switch. Left foot down, right leg lifts, right hand stays down, bend both knees, grab your foot, kick your foot into your hand, Lift your knee, twist to the left, lift your chin, get the knee higher, twist further, push the standing leg straighter, and you can always repeat that. Kick back, lift the knee, twist, push the standing leg straighter. What is it that you're learning about yourself from this practice? Do you have mutant qualities? Something that makes you unique, gifted, Talented. It's going back to the X-Men theme. Okay, both feet down. I promised we'd get both feet down at some point. Padahastasana or Padangushtasana. Padangushtasana is just holding onto the big toes with your peace fingers. Padahastasana is sliding your hands under your feet with your palms face up. Make sure to wash your hands after this practice and pretty well after you do everything all the time. I'm going to make some dinner after this. And this is really just an excuse for me to make nachos. So I'm sorry for ruining everyone else's evening if you are not having nachos, but I am preparing myself for nachos. Okay, and then sit down into a squat position. Shavasana is gonna be optional with this practice. You could always stay in a squat and uh, if you just want some chill time after or go straight to bed, do so, but it's not part of the 45 minutes. Second to last pose, the last one, I foreshadowed it at the very beginning. See if you can remember it before I state it. Um, option for those more flexible, you could bring your feet together But now push your legs straighter, hands down, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. So just demoing those who are a bit more flexible, feet together, you could move your hands back in line with your feet. You could even move your hands further back, tuck your chin in, push your legs straight. Sort of maximizes my stretch and just starts to strain my back. So I just go into a gentler version than others. You might prefer to just hold elbows and sway a little side to side. Make yourself like seaweed in sway.
Okay, 45 minutes, we're done. Way to go, everyone. You can step back, step back into a kneeling position. Namaste, thank you so much. Make sure to drink lots of water and uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a good night.